Today we're going to be building a Notion house drawer tracker and some backstory on it. I just moved into a brand new house, used to live in an apartment and also a college dorm room. So now I have a ton of responsibilities or in the past, you know, maybe a few dishes every once in a while and cleaning my own room. So to be organized, I felt it was best to put this inside of Notion. That way you can track all the different aspects of the house. Now we're going to build out our first database. So we're going to go over here in slash database and we're going to click full page. So you get brought up here and this is where we're going to be tracking everything. So what we're going to do is put individual tours just like that. And the name of this first column over here, we're going to name this as we're going to delete this tags over here because we do not need that. And the first thing we're going to do is go over here and do a status. So this is going to tell us specifically if the chore is done. Now, default in Notion, you guys can see there's not started, in progress, and done. And honestly, that's perfectly fine for this case. Up next, we're going to create a formula. So go over here and roll down. And what we're going to be naming this as due date. But don't worry, we will be coding this out a little bit later. So just put due date right over there. Up next, we're going to do last completed. Now this is going to be a specific date. So go over here, grab date, and then we're going to put last completed. We're going to create a frequency, which is going to be a select. So we're going to name this as a frequency. And we can add in multiple different options over here, depending on how often you want to do a chore. So you can have daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. You can customize this however you like. We're going to add in two more columns over here, and these are going to be relational databases, but let's create those first. So what we're going to do is create a new database. Let's go back over here to the chore tracker slash database full page. And what we're going to do is say rooms, and these are going to be all the different rooms associated with the chores throughout the house. Let's go over here and we're going to create another database. So database full page, and then we're going to name this as people. So the people living at the house, maybe you're renting a house or you have a family and everyone has to do chores. Either way, you got to put those in there. So perfect, right? And let's fill out a few of these over here. So rooms, we're going to just have master kitchen, garage, and then guest. Feel free to add in quite a lot more. I'm just going to do a few for this example. We're here to the people and we're going to add two names. So myself, Ryan, and my girlfriend, May. Then we don't need this over here. So delete. Don't need this tags either. We're going to delete that. And we're going to go back over to the chore tracker and go to the individual chores. So we're going to start building out our relations. So go over here and click relation. And this is going to choose a database that you're related to. So first we have rooms or people. Let's do over here rooms. And you have the option to show this on rooms as well. I highly recommend that. So we're going to click this over here and I'll show you what that happens. So let's click add relation. And now you have the opportunity to click a specific room that the chore is on. We're going to do the same thing with another relation. We're going to do people. So you click that over here. Same thing, show on people and add in that relation. So now you have rooms and people as those other columns. So let's add in our first chore in here. So let's say we're going to do clean sheets. Due date, we're not going to put that in there yet. Last completed, let's say I cleaned the sheets today. Frequency, we're going to say it is weekly. Rooms, I'm only going to say it's the master bedroom because we did not have any guests over. And then for people, I'm going to put for myself. And I'll show you guys how that impacts the other ones. So we go over here, chore tracker. You go to rooms now. You look at master bedroom, right? It says individual chores, clean sheets. That is right over there. And then we go to people. And then look, Ryan, clean sheets. So it's pretty cool. Now everything is interlinked in between each other, but we're going to go back over here and check this out. So one thing I also want to do is set up a due date. Now, one thing that's really cool about Notion is you can actually build out a formula. So this due date can change based off of the frequency. So if I wanted to have it daily, if I put last completed February 3rd, I can make this February 4th. If I wanted to make this weekly, I can turn this into the 10th, monthly, March 3rd. You get the point, right? So how we're going to do that is going over here and we're going to code out a specific formula based around a date add and also if statements based off of the different frequencies that you have set up. So first let's have an example of a date add. So you put over here date add and then you can put over here prop and because that way we can grab this last completed. So prop and then put over here last complete. 
we're gonna have an if statement inside of it. So we're gonna put if, and then we're gonna put prop again, frequency, and we're gonna put equals, and we're gonna just do one example right now. So let's put over here daily, and then what's gonna happen, right? So we're gonna date add of one. And then close out date add, we need to put over what this impacts. Now I have one over here. So we're gonna just do this by days, figure it's the easiest way to do it. So you guys can see if we go back to date add, days is gonna be all lowercase. So let's make sure to put that in there like this and we're gonna close this out. Now it is still showing February 3rd and that's because we've only impacted it daily. So if we go over here and choose a daily, check that out. We've switched it to February 4th, which is really cool. Again, anything else is gonna be February 3rd. Now, how you build out the other ones is nested if statements. Now, before we build out this nested if statement, if you guys haven't watched my Notion formulas video, make sure to watch that right now. We go over 60 different formulas and show you examples one by one They'll come out of that video knowing how to code within it notion. What we wanna do is replace this zero here with another if statement. So we're gonna be looking at next weekly, right? So same exact thing, we're gonna put over here weekly and we're gonna do seven. Not zero or these and click done. And so check this out. If I go over here to weekly, February 10th. And if I go back to daily, February 4th. So I'm gonna be building this out for the rest and I'm gonna put the code down below in the description if you guys just wanna copy and paste it over. So the code is done. You guys can see all the different examples over here. And again, if you had another frequency, make sure to update the code. Up next, we're gonna be creating a board to track progress of everything. So click this plus icon over here, click over to the board. And right now you can see how it shows daily, monthly, quarter, weekly, yearly. We don't want that. So over here where it says group by, you can choose your option. I'm gonna choose by status, right? So you can see not started in progress and also done. But I wanna have it grouped by another way too. I wanna to see who has that specific task. So we're gonna go over here and click subgroup. And then what we're gonna do is choose people. So you can see Ryan, it says clean sheets, and then no people over here. So let's just say we're gonna have another task. Let's grab something from kitchen and we're gonna say clean dishes. This is gonna be a daily task last completed today. And I'm gonna assign that to my board. And now take a look at this. You have Megan and Ryan. Megan has to clean dishes and I have to clean sheets. Now I have a few options here. You can actually hide no people. So you go over here, click those three dots and hide. You have the same options over here with the names or you can click this right here and it shortens that up. Also, you can move these over. So clean dishes, let's say we're working on this right now. That is in progress if it is done right over here, and you can see how that impacts the table. Now you can also filter this. So before I do that though, I'm gonna go over here and change this into weekly for the clean the sheets. So we're over here to filter, and we're gonna filter by the specific due date. So if you have due date this week, right? Clean dishes is the only one that's gonna be there. I can change this over here, click right there, and let's do next month. And then you see both tasks are over. Up next, we're gonna update the room section to make it a little bit nicer. So we're gonna go over to the rooms and we're actually gonna change this up. So instead of a layout of a table, we're actually gonna create a gallery. So what this does is have gallery blocks like this and you have a few different layout options for the gallery itself. So card preview, what I like to do is have a page cover. I'll show you guys how to do that over here. Card size, you can make these either really small, you can make these extremely large or you can keep them medium. Honestly, I kind of prefer medium, but since there's not a lot of rooms, you can also put large for it to really stand out. I'm gonna show you guys how you can do this cover right now. So go over here and grab this cover. So add cover, and then you can change the cover. So you have a few different options. You can grab something from the gallery, upload, you can link to an image. I'm just gonna use Unsplash over here and I'm gonna do bedroom and we'll grab a picture over here. Let's just grab, let's see what this one looks like. Okay, great. So you can do the same thing with these other ones over here. So kitchen, right, add in cover, change cover, and you can really see how this adds up over time. It makes it look really, really nice, especially as you add more rooms and specific tasks. And what's really cool is if you go to the individual page over here, you can see individual chores and it says clean dishes. One other thing I wanted to show you is if you go to individual chores, you can actually open these up. So clean sheets, we can put over here specific tasks that are associated with cleaning the sheets. So you can say like steps, like washer, 60 minutes, use detergent, 
put into dryer. And I'm just using this top of the head, but you can really be very granular with it. So that is how you build out this chore tracker. You've pretty much a few different views that you can go either look at the individual chores over here, look at the sp specific board as it's filled out. You can go over here to people, see the chores that are currently assigned. And lastly, you can go into the rooms and see everything at once. Hope this video was helpful. Again, if you want to learn more about formulas, make sure to click on this video right over here. I go over 65 of them.